Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 22 of our top-down zombie shooter. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be adding the game over condition, as well as fixing a couple of very minor issues uh, that we need to take care of. All right, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with a couple of small things. Um, one is, if you've noticed, when we when we run this, you know, we added that nice little splat sound when we defeat the zombie, right? But the problem is, if I then go and die, and the game starts over again, right? That splat is still there. All right, so each time I restart, and the problem is because, or that's happening because when we we're creating our map right here when we uh, when we first start the game and we load all our data. We make our map right here and we make our map image. And that map image is what we're drawing the, the, the little splats on. And so when we restart, we're still using that image that has the splats drawn on it. So all we want to do to fix this is we're going to take this code right here that loads the map and we're going to put it in def new here. So that way, Whenever we start a new game, we start with the level one map. Okay, and then that way we can, oops, oh, the map folder. We need to define our map folder here. Uh, so dot map folder and load our tab map from that. Right, and that way we'll be able to load other maps when we get to other levels and that's better now if I shoot this guy and then go and let him kill me All right now it's a clean map when I start okay so that was a little one um, we'd also like to uh, do a couple other things which is um, we want to keep track of how many zombies are left because that's going to be our level complete condition is you've cleaned out the map and you've killed all the zombies. So we just want to be able to display on the screen how many zombies are left. So I have added here, um, so we had our title font, which is what we did our uh, pause menu in and stuff. Uh, this HUD font is going to be for our heads up display for displaying any in information. This is a, a font I picked out of the um, font folder I had with a, a bunch of different stuff in it, and you can download it in the link below. Um, so we just want to draw the number of zombies on the screen in our draw section. So we're going to go down there and we're going to say up here, after we draw the health, we can draw text. And what we want to say is the word zombies. Create a colon and the the value here is just going to be the length of the mobs group okay and then we're going to use the HUD font we're going to size it at around 30 uh, we'll do it in white and I'm going to put it in the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to put it at width minus 10. And the Y is going to be 10. And we're going to line it northeast. OK, so let's uh, wrap this around a little bit so it's not so long on the screen there. All right. And oh, didn't like my indenting. Let's back out the space here. There we go. Okay. So there we go. So now I can see how many zombies I have. And when I kill one, that's going to go down, right? Okay. Now, what should happen when I've killed the last zombie? Well, we already have everything in place for that. We just need to trigger it. So here in our update, we're going to define the game over condition and that's just going to be if the length of the mobs group is zero then 
playing equals false. Okay, if playing equals false, then um, our game loop is going to end, right? which is the run function. And if the run function ends, we will show the game over screen. And when the game over screen exits, we will loop around and show the new screen, or load the new game and run a new game. So we just need to define what we want to do in here in the game over screen. Well, there's a couple of things we want to do. We want to show some information, and we want to wait for the player to press the key so that they can play again. Okay, so I'm just going to fill the screen with black. Uh, we can make it look fancier uh, later on. And we're going to need to draw a couple of things. All right, so we're going to draw text. Uh, what we're going to draw is game, game over. We're going to use the title font. Uh, we're going to make it big. Uh, we're going to do it in red. Uh, I'm going to center it. And I'm going to align uh, it centered. All right, let's do this. easy to read and then we also oops we also want to draw text and say press a key uh, we're also going to use the title font oops. Uh, the size we're going to make a bit smaller um, I'm going to do the color in white. I'm going to also center it in X, but in Y, I'm going to put it at height times three fourths, so it's three quarters of the way from the top, and we're going to uh, center that as well. All right, that looks good. Wait, where do I want it? Right there. Okay, so. Now, we draw those two things on the screen. Uh, we need to flip the display so we can see it. And then we need to wait for a key to get pressed. Now, this is something that I probably am going to want to do on the start screen as well. So I'm just going to define it as a function that we can call anytime we want to just say, wait for a key to get pressed. OK, and then we will. Uh, define it here. Now, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to have a little loop here. So we're going to make a loop called waiting. And as long as that is true, we're just going to sit here doing nothing. So we need to tick the clock so we keep our loop running um, at a reasonable speed. Um, and then we need to check for events. And there's two events we could deal with. Uh, the quit event, right? We still want people to be able to X out. So we set waiting equal to false to end this loop we're in. And we do the and we do the quit function. But otherwise, uh, the type the only event we care about is a key up event. And I think I talked about this earlier in the, if you watched the video on the platforming game, um, we want to do a key up event, not a key down event. That way, when the player taps the key, we trigger on them letting go of it, not on them holding it down. Otherwise, we would start a new game and they already have the key pressed down, which can sometimes make things happen that they don't expect. And so this way, there we go. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, so we'll run it here, and we need to run over here and die. And oops, typo, self.screen. All right. There we go, game over. Press a key, I restart. Okay, now, 
one thing that's ha gonna happen, I'm gonna hold the arrow key down while I'm running around so that I will be continuing to hold it down when I die, okay? So I'm still holding it down. And you see when I let go, it restarted, even though I might've been letting go because the game ended. I haven't even had a chance to look at the game over screen yet. So what we can do is just add um, pg.event.wait here, okay? And what that's going to do is it's basically going to clear out, it's gonna pull out any event that happens at the beginning of this and basically start with a fresh um, event queue so that when we hold the key down, we won't have that problem, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna hold the forward key down. I'm still holding it down and when I let go, See, nothing happened, but if I tap it again, then we get in. So that will prevent that little problem from happening. All right, and the last one little change that uh, we need to make is right now our bullets. Our bullets are only doing damage depending on what weapon the player is holding. Right, and right now that means if I shoot a bunch of uh, pistol bullets, and while the bullet is in the air, uh, from the the pistol bullet is in the air, flying towards the target. Before it hits the target, I pick up the shotgun. Then, when the bullet hits the target, it will do shotgun damage instead of pistol damage, even though it was a pistol bullet that I fired. And so we need to correct that. So what we need to do is in our sprites, uh, in our bullet sprite. We need to add uh, a damage per bullet. So when we spawn the bullet, we're just going to pass in what the damage is. Okay. And we'll just store that as a class variable. Damage equals damage. And then when we spawn the bullet, which is up here in def shoot, right? That's where we spawn the bullet. Then what we want to do is just pass the weapon damage at that time. So when we spawn the bullet, we add here, we want to pass from the weapons dictionary, whichever weapon we're holding, uh, the damage value. All right, now that will work, that will, should run now and not give us any uh, error messages. I'll switch to one here, All right? But now we need to actually subtract the bullet's damage from the mob uh, when we hit it. Right, so right now we're, again, subtracting the weapon damage. So here we go when the bullet hits the mob. Right, we don't want to just subtract the weapon damage. We want to subtract the bullet's damage, which might be, which will be assigned to it, right? So here we need to say, um, so we're not going to do this. I'm just going to comment that out so you can see where we are. Now, especially when we're firing the shotgun, there's a lot of bullets in the air, right? And right now what we're doing is we're saying uh, we're getting a list. This hits list is a list of the mobs that were hit. Right? And for each of those mobs, there might be multiple bullets hitting them. So we need to, for each mob, look at which things hit that. And for each of those, we subtract the mobs from the mob's health, the bullets damage. Okay. And maybe I'll make it totally clear here and call this bullet instead of D. That's not clear. Okay. So, um, and in fact, why don't we name this mob here, just to be completely clear, for each mob in the hits dictionary, we want to take the mob's health, and we want to take the mob's loss. Okay. All right, so hopefully that's clear. So for each mob that we hit, we're going to go through each bullet that hit that mob, and subtract that bullet's damage, and, and then like we did before, set the mob's velocity to zero. 
So you shouldn't see much in the way of difference as far as how it works now. But at least when we um, switch weapons and we have, you know, the all the shotgun bullets flying out and everything, they're going to keep their, their damage when they hit uh, whatever mob they hit. 